Hi there, guys. Well, I got a question in class today on 2i, and it was part, it was question 2, part C. Um, and the question actually says solve the inequalities graphically, but a student was asking whether or not we can solve this, these, this uh, set of inequalities here with the modular signs, if we can solve this algebraically. Um, and I think it's definitely easier to do graphically, and you should be able to sketch a couple of graphs out here and sort this one out graphically. I, I'm going to try and deal with the algebraic version here, but I will just show you that I've come up with the two graphs just to kind of explain what I'm talking about algebraically as well. So there are my two graphs. Oh, and where do those two graphs come from? Well, let's just look at the question again. The question again is, two lots of x plus two in modulus brackets minus this other modulus of x plus five is less than four. So if we take the minus x plus five in modulus brackets to the other side, we get this. Okay, so that then gives me two graphs and I'm saying, well, where is this modulus graph less than this modulus graph here? So it's an equivalent question. I've just changed it so that we can deal with this algebraically and also see what's going on um, graphically. So graphically, I would still do the question the same. I would split it up into sort of um, a modulus, a pair of uh, modulus brackets on either side. It just makes sketching those two functions much, much simpler. It's very easy to do, for example, the graph of x plus 4. Um, and know that that crosses here. So there's the graph of 2x plus 4. And then, of course, where it crosses, you're just going to flick back upwards when you've got the modulus there. OK, and you can do the same on the other side. But then once you've got this, the, the, the line like this, you can just add four to take it there as well. OK, anyway, I've done that on Desmos. This is an equivalent question. I hope you appreciate that. OK, so uh, in terms of doing this algebraically, yes, I think you could do this algebraically. And I think you could split it into two things here. I'll split it into this thing and I'll split it into this thing over here because I saw that the blue line, this one here, actually separates into two functions. Remember a modulus, when you include a modulus function, you essentially actually have two, the addition of two functions in a piecewise function. So this function combined with this function gives you this function here. Now, we're saying that four minus what's inside the modulus brackets gives us this thing up into this point here. And four plus this thing without modulus brackets, so this, gives you um, a valid graph, the other side of the graph, from x is greater than or equal to um, minus five. OK, so in terms of solving this, now we could say, where is this smaller than this graph line? Let's just follow that one on. Okay, and it will be perhaps here, perhaps. Or maybe that doesn't hit, I don't know. OK, and uh, where does this red graph line, where is it underneath this graph here? Oh, we can see that's actually what we want as our answer. OK, so we're splitting it into these two things here. So uh, first of all, with this question, we've taken the modulus to one side and to the other. To the other side, so we split up our moduluses. And now we're thinking, OK, let's get rid of the modulus sign okay, by taking it into these questions here. Now, this is where I think algebraically you can take it further. And a bit like when you do, you know, modulus of x is less than or equal to, say, 4, that really means that x is less than or equal to 4 and greater than or equal to minus 4. Now, you can do the same here. And you can do the same with this one as well. You can do the same structure as that by getting rid of the modular sign. Okay, so that and sort those two, two things out. OK, um, the only thing I would say, though, is in order to think whether or not we're going to get a valid answer, we need to have the correct, we need to have answers which are in the correct domain. If we're getting out answers which are greater than minus 5 from these inequalities here, then that's not a valid answer because this whole function wasn't valid there. So what I'm saying is this function here looks to be underneath the red line, maybe between two points there, between here and here. It looks to be the case, but that's not in the valid range because this stops here. So 
basically what I'm saying is I think that this was missing when we were talking about it algebraically. And so now you can go ahead and solve these. You can say, okay, well, look, 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to 4 minus x plus 5 and is greater than or equal to far, uh, the negative of that, so minus 4 plus x plus 5, okay? So now you can solve that, and you might need to solve it by taking that thing to the left-hand side, and then solving the right-hand side, and then combining those as a set of inequalities, if they do combine as a set of uh, double inequalities there at all, okay? Now, I think that you're going to find two answers, one here and one here, and it's going to create a set of um, double inequalities there, but they are going to be double inequalities which do not satisfy the fact that x has to be less than or equal to minus 5. So you are not going to get any answers from this side here. That's not going to work. Now, if you do the same here, you know, where you do this thing is less than or equal to this thing positive on one side, negative on the other side, okay? But if you do that here, then you should end up with your two roots, this one, or two solutions, this one and this one, and a set of inequalities between those two. Now, since those two inequalities will both be sat satisfying, x has to be greater than or equal to minus five, then that will be good. Okay, so that would work in this case. However, um, I think, um, is it possible that we could have had, just think about whether the graph line went like this instead, maybe the graph line went like this and then like this. Whoa, so then we'd need to get inequalities which satisfied, we'd get inequalities up until here. And <laughs> you can see probably it would stop there, but that wouldn't be valid. Okay, so it, I think it just becomes really complicated in terms of the domains that we're considering. And so um, I wouldn't take this via an algebraic approach. I would come up with a sketch of the situation. And then for me, let's just try and take some of this back to, okay, so, okay. So from my point of view here, I would solve this line, this one here, against this line, which is the positive of this. And then I would solve this line against this line, which is the negative of this. Okay, so it's this one. No, it's not. It's still, it's still this one. And against the negative of, of uh, 2x uh, plus 4 there. Okay, and that will give us this solution, and that will give us this solution. But I know where those two solutions are from the sketch of my graph in the first place. Now, just to complicate things a little bit more, people were talking about squaring both sides. Um, and again, I think that that's going to be extremely complicated. I think in this case, it might work. I mean, it is possible. Let me just get rid of everything, okay? It is possible, uh, let me go back, so 2x plus four, saying when is that less than or equal to four plus x plus five, is that right? Minus, that was, plus, that was fine, that was fine. So um, we're trying to do this now. People were talking about just squaring this thing here. Now, is it possible to square this thing on the right-hand side? Well, yes, it is. You can square this. If you squared this, you know, you can get out 16, and this thing squared is going to be all positive, so we can just say x plus 5 all squared, and then plus um two lots of the the middle term essentially so eight um two lots of these two things times together eight and x plus five okay so yes you can square that but i think that squaring both sides when we've got inequalities is fiendishly difficult to conceive what's really happening there and so i wouldn't do that and it, it might work in this case because everything is positive anyway so you know when you square the blue height there and the red height there, that's still going to give you an equals to the same thing. Same here. Okay, um, but what happens, say for example, if my blue line had a minus four there instead? You know, if we're down at minus four, I don't know, 
just trying to come up with a, an example that might not work. Is it possible to get something where when you're squaring this, you're actually getting a curve up this way? And I think that that just becomes very difficult to conceive what's happening there. Because you could end up with negative answers from complicated functions here, which could then ultimately be greater once you're squaring both sides. So um, I, I think that's too hard. I just wouldn't go down that route in this case. OK, Guys, I hope that clears up some of the issues from the lesson. Um, do keep asking questions and uh, thank you for all your questions. I enjoy the, uh, the, the challenging math questions. OK, thank you very much. And I'll see you next week.